What's up, Top Shelf Nation? On today's episode, we're going to talk about sports, we're going to talk about what it's like to miss a ferry, and we're going to talk about huckleberries. What's up, YouTube? Thanks for joining us here on today's Top Shelf Talk. Here you're going to learn about the fundamentals of building business through the lens of bartending, where you can learn how to build brand, drive traffic, and listen to learn to some of the best people in the industry, from bartenders to bar managers and even our prospective bartenders of the future. Before we get started, don't forget to hit us up on Instagram and give us a follow on Twitter. And now, for the episode you've been waiting for. What's up, Top Shelf Nation? Thanks for jumping in with us here today. Today, our, day, our guest is going to be Cassie Simula. Cassie, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So me and Cassie go back probably about 12 years or so now. Um, and it's funny, I've been thinking about this for a few days leading up to uh, this conversation with her here tonight. I was trying to think of like that moment where like when we met, you know, what was that like? Oh, hey, I'm Cassie. Hey, nice to meet you, Cassie. I'm Tyson. And I could not put my finger on it. I could not figure it out. I feel like it really feels like I just showed up to work one day and you had like already been there, like going full speed for who fucking knows how long. Like, I don't know. Like you were just going ham and from the moment I, I knew you, I guess. So do you, re do you remember how we met or anything? Uh, so I was trying to think of that last night. Like I know my first real memory, I feel like you might've like came in like a couple months after I started or right after I started working maybe. But I remember I was still serving. I think I served there for like two months. And I remember I just got like quadruple sat with like a big top and two six tops and the three top. And I walk in the indoor and I start like loading up my tray of drinks. And I remember you specifically said hot food before cold drinks. And I think <laughs> I just gave you this look like, are you fucking kidding me I think it was I was like are you testing me right now <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I just kept getting my drinks and just walked out <laughs> it sounds like something a rookie manager would say huh yeah yeah fucking idiot I was to the last <laughs> that was kind of what I that was my first remembering of you though <laughs> yeah so when did when did you start working there what year um I moved down there January 09 and I started working there like February 09. Okay, so that's probably what it was then. So, because I had worked there, I think I started there like late 2006, but in 2009, I got transferred to uh, the Woodland location. Oh, so that's right. All 2009, right. I was working there. So that's when you started, was when I, when I had like, I probably just left maybe like a few months before that thing, before you started. I feel like you had just got back. I can't remember. Yeah, I, and then I came back. I was, to, I was yeah, serving I was, though, because I only served for like two months before they put me in the bar. Yeah, so then I came back like March or April of 09, I think. Oh, yeah, it must have been right. That, <laughs> yeah, I, so that's what, okay, so that makes <laughs> sense why like you were already comfortable with the place and like going full speeds because you came when I was like in that little transition period from the, okay that makes yeah. sense then yeah <laughs> and, and, oh just a, a little context for our listeners too so Cassie and I met in uh Yuba City California uh, we worked together for a few years she now lives up in Washington right like Seattle area I don't know it's no like four and a half hours from Seattle I live in Spokane okay, so nowhere near right Seattle in Washington <laughs> okay Spokane Washington area okay <laughs> Seattle is Washington. <laughs> That's the only, I know that you say Spokane, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, there's a Spokane there too, but yeah. other than that, yeah, it's Seattle, and that's about all I know, so that makes sense. <laughs> Just like most people. It's where Gonzaga is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, and looking at your pictures on the back there, I know we talked about it a few minutes ago, that picture of California and Washington where they just kind of like intersect, dude, that's like the coolest thing I've ever seen. You said your friend got that for you? Yeah, Mo sent it for my birthday. She That's got it amazing. on Etsy. It's pretty fucking cool. It's got like little nails and then the strings and then it like meets up where we we both live. That thing's cool, dude. Thanks. So that little pit the, the little pinpoint on the state of Washington, is that the part of Washington you live at? Yes. Let me show you. So I live right here, like right by Idaho. And then that's Damn, that's a cool left. that's a cool piece of wall art there, dude. I like that. Yeah. Mo, you did good. 
Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Can't wait to see your face in two days. Oh, that's right. You're coming down to the area for your little get out of town trip vacation, huh? Yeah. Nice. How long are you going to be down? Uh, fly down Thursday morning and then fly back Monday night. That's a nice little, nice little break from work. Yes. One more shift. The parking lot bars here are open past 10 p.m. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it's a parking lot bar. It'll feel great when it's 104. <laughs> Almost feels like I'm in the, like in high school when you used to like have to find a dark parking lot or like a park or a court or something and just brown bag it, you know? Pass around the Mickeys. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was like a week and a half ago. I was at, uh, my kids were with their mom for the night and I was feeling like hella nostalgic. I'm like, I'm going to go to the liquor store. I'm going to find like a 40 of malt liquor. Just like a throwback to when I was like 16. I don't know. I don't know if it's just our liquor stores, but I couldn't find any malt liquor anywhere. No so. Mad Dog? Nothing? There was no Mad Dog. There was no Old English. No Steel Reserve. No oh, nothing. Oh, shit. None of it? Oh. I don't know. What liquor yeah, store did you go to? I think you needed to go to a ghetto, like, gas station. Yeah, well, the ghetto room. was, like, a half an hour away. I went to this, like, bougie gas station around the corner where they had this, like, micro craft brew cave. <laughs> yeah, there's two of them, and they have, like, these walk-in refrigerators. And oh, yeah, no. And all they have is, like, these craft beers and everything yeah. like that, which is great, but I wanted something, like, I don't know, I guess a little more, like, a little more good that night. <laughs> it's uh, funny i was a little disappointed i'm gonna have to plan my nostalgia nights in advance i guess <laughs> yeah stock up somewhere else yeah. ahead. so that way when i have to drive to the hood to get my drinks i could do it during the daytime <laughs> probably smart <laughs> can't keep up with those kids now <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, so for our audience here why don't you give them a little bit of a backstory um comic book issue number one origin story what was Cassie like growing up, high school? Oh, man. So I grew up on a little island by Seattle. You had to take a ferry to get to. So it's super small. So like you, parents knew if you cut class before noon, like, oh, I saw you. Cassie was so-and-so. <laughs> <laughs> so On the boat? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, it was before cell phones, so you didn't have to worry about that. But uh, I was a shy kid. I don't know. I was just... I've always been a homebody, keep to myself. Like I'm very not social. Like this stresses me out, like just talking. <laughs> I always hated the phone growing up, like, but it was like a small town. Like me and my best friend, we'd ride our bike to each other's house. We lived like a mile down the road. And we were the kids that were out till dusk and then you get home and it's dinner time. And that's, is what it is. <laughs> and I remember like high school, we'd like, say we were at so-and-so's house but really we would go to seattle or go do something <laughs> and then you miss the boat and then you're like shit now i'm in seattle and i got i'm supposed <laughs> to be home by 10 and i lied and now there's not a boat till 11 30 <laughs> so then it gets deeper and deeper and then you're like oh yeah <laughs> so how funny was that to explain like growing up as a kid i mean look so most normal kids, they miss the bus when they try to get home, you know? <laughs> Maybe they catch a bike ride, someone gives them a pump back to their house or something, but you're on a you're on a boat, dude. You miss a boat, you're done. Oh well, yeah, that was the thing. Like the school was on the island, so I didn't have to commute. A lot of people came over from Seattle and Tacoma to go to school there, but it was mostly like on like Friday nights, we'd like, Oh yeah, we're just gonna be at Suzanne's house and then like oh no we're really gonna go to Seattle and then like so you get in the line and you get off the island and then you're in downtown traffic I remember being lying to my parents saying we were go I was going to my friend's house <laughs> we cut cut practice we don't go to practice take the ferry go to Seattle it's Friday night downtown rush hour I had got my license maybe two weeks before and I <laughs> And then, we, obviously, we we don't know where we're going. This is before maps on your phone, so we're just, like, <laughs> going with it. Miss our exit when we're headed back to the ferry. <laughs> Supposed to be back at her house by whatever time. We're not. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and no cell phones, so parents aren't, like, calling you going, where the hell are you at? 
Yeah, exactly. They're like waiting for you, right? Like they're on the front oh, porch. Yeah. Like, we have the check-in thing. Like, oh yeah, I'll, I'll check. I'll call you when I get there. Make sure you're safe. <laughs> no. Whoopsies. Oh shit. <laughs> but yeah, that's part of growing up there. But great place to grow up. Super fun. So then it was like I, I was a shy kid. Just I don't know, it was just an average kid. Nothing special. I always I played softball from the time I was like four to all through high school. And then I went to Western, so you either lived on an island forever or you went to college. So I was like, well, I'm not going to be a town rat. I'm going to college. <laughs> so that was just like the next thing. You just go to college, but I didn't know what I was going to do, and I still don't. I got my college degree back in 06. <laughs> uh, so I did that, got my degree in sociology, like criminal justice, then met some friends and actually I had already graduated no no I was like a junior in college or junior in college I think when I met my friend and her and her mom wanted to open a bar so I was like they they bought like the the place and they were like hey do you want to help out with this I was like oh hell yeah so we did all the construction ourselves like remodeled the whole bar like I learned how to do everything like I can do anything construction wise except electrical and plumbing I don't fuck with that (laughs) but uh so we did that and did the construction it probably took a whole summer one right like this a year after I graduated and then we became bartenders (laughs) so your first like bar job was like literally building a bar building a bar yes I had never served I so my only jobs before that I umpired baseball I worked at a movie theater in like my one screen movie theater on the island (laughs) and I worked at a grocery store in college and then we did the construction on the bar and then we oh then we're bartenders (laughs) like fuck it you want to build a bar let's build a bar (laughs) let's do it I have a lot of sweat blood and tears went into that place I have a a nice little one right here so when you built the bar and then you started bartending afterwards. Did you ever have those moments where we're like, fuck, we should have done this instead? Or like, shit, we should have oh. did it that way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and after, like, during the whole process, it's like, oh, man, we really didn't need to do this. We could have just, but we had, like, these, like, exactly what we wanted. Like, we could have kept, it used to be a bar, so like, we could have kept a lot of this stuff. And But we'd never done it before. We were just winging it. Like, we had one guy that was actually a construction guy, and then it was us. Then but then nobody like, like bartended that was part of the process though huh oh no no so <laughs> another backstory me and a couple of my girlfriends we used to go out every thursday no joke 75 thursdays in a row we went out so <laughs> like as soon as we turned you kind of? 75 oh yeah it was like oh, after a while it was like because once we hit like thanksgiving it's like oh shit it's been 75 thursdays not even Damn. exactly so we hold on we real went, quick before we move on what what broke that streak you get to 75 uh, like what what happened at 76 i don't know <laughs> i can't remember <laughs> but i know we hit thanksgiving like we, i would get that whoever fucked it up i would give them so much shit about that you know what i mean uh, that's a good question i haven't thought about that in years yeah. oh i don't think i'd be able to ever let that go like, I'm oh, talking, man. we had so many different things that would happen, but we still would just power through. We'd still go out. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, then we learned how to bartend. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, very, 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 very few people start with building the bar before they start bartending. That's awesome. Sorry. I had never served. I had never. So that was my only serving. Or I didn't even serve there. I bartended. That was it. Like, it was like a nightclub bar. Is that something so, you ever thought about You ever thought about doing beforehand? Or was this just like a opportunity came out of nowhere? You took it yeah, and just ran with it? The opportunity came out of nowhere. That's kind of how I roll. Like, I'm not a planner. I'm not into any of that kind of. It's just. I'll figure out what I want to be when I grow up when it just happens like it just there you go. <laughs> I, I have no clue what I want to do it's like dang I'll figure it out one day <laughs> oh for sure so what kind of bartender do you think you were I mean like how would you describe yourself as a bartender back then that first job oh, God, at the bar was, you built 
stupid. (laughs) I was that bartender. I was like 22 years old. Like back in the day, we would, as long as you're on a bona fide break, you could drink with your guests. Like as long as you're on that side of the bar, like, so we would, there was weeks at a time where I wouldn't go to bed before the sun came up. Like I was that like balls out, like just party all night. Like you call a cab for yourself when you leave work. Like, Damn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so many that's, good like, time. that's like an OG bartender right there. Cause some these new bartenders don't know what that's like. Anyone's bartender okay. started bartending in the last, like maybe like 10 years. They just, they don't know what that's like. Yeah, yeah well, and it's like I would never do that now. Like, <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, that was it. Was back, it was young, it was time to party. It was who cares? Like, nothing holding you down. Like, you're young, you're dumb, you're just like looking <laughs> back. It's like, man, I should have saved some of that money. <laughs> <laughs> there was nice people like $500, like, just yes. stupid. Oh, uh, yeah. So how long did you work at that bar? Uh, probably two years, and then I was just like, I gotta get the fuck out of Washington. Like, it was, we had a bad winter. It was just miserable. Um, I was dating a guy. We went down to visit at the end of October, and it was 95 degrees, and that was my first experience in Yuba, and I was like, let's move here. He's like, <laughs> all right (laughs) so we hadn't even been dating really like we were friends but we hadn't been dating we officially started dating when we went down there and I was like let's move here he's like all right so (laughs) moved like two months later and yeah spent like five five years down there why Yuba City that's where he grew up that's where he grew up yeah so his family was um but yeah, now I have still have a ton of friends there, and yeah. So when I got hired at Applebee's, I had never served, never anything. Like I had bartended <laughs> at one bar, and that's when I was like, well, when we moved there, I was like, well, I got to find a job. So of course I'm not. I'm like 25. I don't care. I we're, I'm just gonna move at a drop of a dime. That's just kind of who I am. I would still do that. <laughs> and then it's out. I'll find a job when I get there. So you had only had that one bartending job before I met you then? Yep. Huh. I never knew that. Yeah. That's yep, pretty that insane because you look like, I mean, you were comfortable as fuck back there. Like, confident, comfortable, like you knew what the hell you were doing. And I you look like you had been doing this forever. I remember when they asked if I would bartend at Applebee's, and I had been serving for a couple months. I was like, oh, I don't know about that. I, I hate <laughs> I'm like, there's a lot of foo-foo shit that goes on here. And I remember Tawny was like, oh, it's not bad. It's fun. I'm just like, "Ah, there's a lot of fucking drinks that I really don't want to make here. And I was like, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. Like, I'd rather try something and hate it. And I did. And I was like, oh, it's all right. Like, the bar is my vibe. Like, I serve. Like, it is what it is. But, like, I can serve better than most people. But I prefer to bartend. Do you think you have like a different, like a server personality versus your bartender personality? Mm, it just depends. Like, so right now with all this COVID shit, I don't have a bar rail. We have zero people sitting at the rail up here. So I don't have anyone at my rail, but I have 15 tables. So they don't have a server in the bar. So that's me. So it's like, I can, I can serve. Like I'm good at either one, but bartending's like definitely my vibe and I get like if I I don't know I'm different with people at my rail like I hate speaking in front of people but if I'm behind my bar I can talk to anyone it doesn't matter like I that that kind of spotlight's okay but like being like front and center in a group like a crowd of people no (laughs) (laughs) I just like to just be in the background so one thing I've noticed with like servers is they tend to I guess, tailor their personality based on their guests. You know what I mean? So they might have three different personalities between the three different tables. But bartending, it seems like bartenders are more comfortable just being themselves because, uh, maybe I don't know if because is the right word, but just walking up, it's like, this is who I am. 
you could take it or there's fucking yeah, 20 other bars. You're going to go somewhere else or you're going to be sitting here with me. Like, I'm not going <laughs> to edit myself. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's it, watch- edit yourself. Yeah, like there's a big difference between when I get a dining room table with like families and kids. Like if you're shaking your Mountain Dew cup because you want another, uh uh-uh, uh, like you're not, <laughs> not gonna fly with me. Like I'm used to the bar where people will give me shit and I'll dish it right back. Like <laughs> oh for sure. And my what managers some- know that I'm just obviously I work for corporate places. I work at Buffalo Wild Wings and Applebee's. I can't like be totally myself but with my with my regulars that come in every day oh they know the real me (laughs) oh for sure yes what are some of the things that you took from that first bartending job that you had that you kind of uh, i guess learned from and then applied differently when you started bartending at applebee's uh well it was night and day like applebee's is very corporate like you know what to expect it's just like very you have your procedures that you buy a book. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, it's just, you don't just get a, Oh, here's the button for a $6 drink. Like it's very, (laughs) very cut and dry. Like, and there was flexibility. Of course there always is, but this other bar I worked at, it was just like literally a mom and pops kind of place. And it's like, Oh, we're out of that well we're out like oh sorry <laughs> oh I gotta go cook some fish and chips real quick I'll be right back like you, <laughs> like, you kind of had to know how to do everything um whereas like it was definitely great for volume like I remember one time it was like a random Tuesday and I don't know why I can't remember what was going on but we were so busy and we dressed like whatever we want. It didn't matter. We would wear like shorts and t-shirt tank tops and flip flops and shit while we we're working. So I remember it was busy as shit, broke a glass. I kind of like swept it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Probably 50 people standing at my rail. It's me and one other person. All of a sudden I step on something and I'm like, Oh shit. I feel like my foot slipping. And I'm like, Oh, whatever. It's, it's fine. All of a sudden, my foot is like sliding. I look down, and I'm just there's blood everywhere. Like I stepped oh, on a shard of gl- like a huge chunk of glass. I have a huge scar on my foot, and I'm like, I think I gotta fix this real quick. Like, <laughs> I'll be right back. Let me go find the band aid. <laughs> oh, so bad. I'm like, well, this is why you don't wear flip flops to work. <laughs> but it didn't matter. Like it was just like a. It was a bar. Like you, we've all been to bars where it's like people dress like sluts and wear their <laughs> flip flops and high heels and shit. Like really, <laughs> that's not practical shit. So yeah, very not like that at Applebee's. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Yeah, that's totally <laughs> different. In non-slip shoes, you go home and get them. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you back in twenty minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, we're I talk out before you leave. roll with it. Like I had all types of people. It was just like, if you're out of something, oh, sorry, man, what else can I get for you? Like, I don't know. You, you just figure it out. It's back then. It was like, if somebody, the, the thing I did like is if somebody's being a dick to you, well, you know what? You can get the fuck out of here. It's like that. You can't do that at Applebee's. Like you got to no. put the fake smile. <laughs> sorry, sir. <laughs> we can't act like that here. <laughs> but you're thinking the shit out of it though huh yeah oh yeah i have a really good fake smile i hate people i hate people <laughs> like i say that at least once a week i hate people and people are like but you're you're, well, you're in such a social job it's like well it's my job like <laughs> i enjoy my job i love my jobs I talk to people i watch sports it's just like what better job can you have but oh my god some of the shit people do i just want to wring their neck like i'll be taking their order thinking i want to punch you in the throat right now (laughs) the mask covers my good fake smile though so (laughs) oh i didn't even think about the mask they can still see the eyes roll (laughs) that's all they have is the eyes now huh i can just People can read the eyes. The eyes say it all, huh? Give me away. Oh shit! 
And everything sounds like you're mumbling when you're walking away now, too, huh? <laughs> Which is good. They can't hear me saying. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. So as long as I've known you, I mean, even when, when I came there and you had already been working there, you'd already had like, or seemed like you always, you always had a huge following of like regulars that were, I mean, they were very comfortable with you and you were comfortable with them. Yeah, I definitely get that from my dad. Like my dad can talk to anyone. Like his social hour is going to the grocery store and just chatting it up with his people <laughs> at the grocery store. Like, like staying like in line, just shooting the shit. A 10 minute trip to the grocery store for a normal person takes him like an hour. And it's just, that's, I can talk to anybody. Like you just, I feel like you have to, like when people go to the bar, they either go to the bar to talk to you or just to sit there by themselves. There's, there's no in between, but yeah, like, I don't know. I'm a huge sports person. That's usually how I strike up conversation with people, especially at Buffalo. Cause it's like, oh, that's a sports bar, but Applebee's it's like, I living down there. Nine out of 10 people were Niners fans. So of course I'm a Seahawks fan. So I'm going to give them shit. And that's how I would get a lot of, conversations going god you know what that's funny that you said that is like while i'm like frantically trying to think of how we met that's the only fucking thing that kept coming back in my head is you always used to wear this this fucking seahawks jersey there yep and it just pissed Gone me off no way I f- yeah <laughs> and it used to piss me off because you fucking i mean you owned us back then like no matter what we did we could not get past you guys no, I swear to God, like, you just wore that jersey, just rubbing it in, strolling into the bar. <laughs> Seahawks sucked back then. The Niners were the ones in the Super Bowl. Fuck. Seahawks went in 05, and then they didn't go until, what, 2015? 14? Oh, it all blurs together. I don't know the years. I, but I... Yeah, that was a big, it's always been a big conversation starter is like my teams, especially because I'll give people shit like, like tonight in my bar, I had a guy and you could tell he was from out of town. He had keys that were rental car keys. Like that's the biggest giveaway on if somebody's just in town working. A little like, oh, on the keychain. Yep. So I was like, oh, where are you from? He's like, oh, St. Louis. So I was like, oh, you're not a Cardinals fan, are you? So I'm a Cubs fan. So he's like yeah I'm like oh we're not gonna get along like <laughs> and then after that is he gives me shit I give him shit and it that's just how it goes but Damn. that's a lot of regular how many how many games behind are the Cardinals at this point I feel like they haven't played in like two weeks um they've played five games they haven't played it's since a- July 29th I think and so they're, they're like 10 games, games behind everybody huh they're fucking me because I'm in a uh, – it's called the 13 Run Club with a buddy of mine, another regular of mine. He's a big Reds fan. I'm a big Cubs fan. So we are just splitting the NL Central. So everyone you, you buy in, it's like 20 bucks a team. And if your team scores 13 runs, you win the pot – the money for the week so if if there's multiple teams in the week that score 13 runs it cancels out or you get like part of it but because the fucking cardinals haven't been (laughs) playing the cubs series the Pirates series all these series are canceled so we're missing out on our chance and i'm pissed if it makes you feel any better i'm not too terribly thrilled about the cardinals offense anyways so you're maybe only missing like two to three runs a game but but well it's the pirates and the cubs we don't have a chance to get 13 runs well, so you got any the pirates team, too any team in the nl central that scores 13 runs you win the pot like tonight okay. the phillies scored 13 runs so whoever had the that nl east won the money yeah so you guys pick, so you guys pick a division yeah well him and i are splitting the division usually it's like you have like two teams or whatever, but him and I, instead of going ha- like each picking two and then splitting one team, we're just splitting the division. That's so it's cool. him and it's like six of his buddies. So they each have a division. No, it's six of us. To- six of us total. Yeah, six of us total. So 
seven of us total because somebody has the NL East, somebody has the AL East, somebody has like each division, and then we're just sharing because okay. we're both, yeah. And it's 13 runs in a week or in a game? No, in a game. So if, if any team scores 13 runs in a game, you win the money for the week. But if there's multiple teams, then you split it. So, Do I feel like outside of the Cubs, the, the NL Central just isn't – maybe the Brewers, but they've been slow this they've year. Been but They've been sucking. They've been yeah. horrible. Yeah. The Reds Cubs have been looking good, though. Reds, I'm yeah. just – I don't know. We'll I like see. a few of the players, but I, I don't know. I think they're playing over their heads right now, personally. Yeah. We'll see. Baseball's – there's been a lot of just bad plays this year. Like, they look like they're playing spring training. Like, they're not look, – nobody's looking yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. Although the ball seemed to be exploding tonight. So there's, like, multiple teams that had, like, oh, five home run yeah, games. Like 13, 14, 16 runs. The Nats scored 16, I think, tonight. The Mariners yeah. scored 9 or 10. Like, it was crazy runs today. Angels and A's are like nine and ten or something. It's, nine ew. to nine last I saw, and then Arizona was at like eleven. Uh, it was crazy high scores. I don't know what was going on tonight. They brought the juice balls back. That's what it was. It they got to pump up those it's offenses. Today, stats. It's just today. Just today. Well, I don't know. We'll see. Definitely. going to have a twenty twenty season. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those years, though. You never know. <laughs> Anything could happen right now. Oh my god, I know. Well, yeah, I think like the Marlins are in first in the you know the Marlins, East. yeah. Fucking Marlins, like that. Yeah, this is the kind Baltimore's of Baltimore's in the hunt. Like, come on. Like, I know, yeah. Baltimore versus Miami for a World Series. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that would be something fun to see. <laughs> so you get pretty close with your regulars. I mean, like doing shit like this. This isn't. I mean, a lot of bartenders do that. How close do you think you get with your bartenders? Like, what? How do you how do you build that personal relationship with your bartenders where you're like making ongoing bets with them like this? I mean, this is like a season. No, this is a commitment. Like, I have such a, I'm like I love sports. Like, not many people you meet, especially women, love sports like me. So, I'll have my regulars my whole bar will be full and they all know who I got on my fantasy team. So they're like, Oh shit, your guy just got you a touchdown or, Oh, your guy just jacked a grand slam. Like, so they know, like I keep my work life and my private life separate. Like I, I don't like hang out with regulars. I don't, that's not right. my thing. I just don't like people. I'm a very much a, I go home. I, do my puzzle, I drink my champagne, and I watch state line sports. <laughs> like, but I have a couple different regulars I all play in their fantasy league or, like, this 13-run club, one of my regulars I'm in with. So, like, I've been working the same schedule at Buffalo. So I work Thursday night, Sunday night, and Monday night. So all football nights. And then I work Saturday day. So – I have all my college football guys on Saturdays and then my professional teams on the other days. And they've been coming in for years since we opened. We've been open seven years, almost seven years, and I've worked there the whole time. So they've only known me those days. So they yeah. just, they've been coming to see me since day one. This year is going to be weird though, because I don't have a rail. So They'll come, and we have, like, three tables that are right up against the rail, but it's still not the rail. Like, right. my regulars, they always want those tables for sure. But other than that, it's like I'm doing – I'm more of a server right now, which is weird for me. Like, I don't put yeah, it – Yeah, that's a totally different vibe. Me wrong, but <laughs> I still – You have, like – so your bar guests that normally sit at the rail, like, now that they're in tables, do they still, like – talk across the aisles to each other like they oh, would the yeah. oh yeah oh yeah we still have the six feet thing but and then some, <laughs> of them will, some of them will sit together like if there's not a table open for them like because a lot of our regulars they've been coming for years too and it's just Applebee's is different I only work two mornings a week there so it's like it's mostly old people it's not like I have a ton I have my regulars but it's not like at Buffalo where I'm 
there four or five days a week. But yeah, you definitely have the ones that come every day. They want to sit in the same spot, like just like they would sit in the same bar stool every single day. Like, yeah, so their world's like rocked right now, huh? They're like, what the fuck yeah, is this? Oh, there's this one. It's like, oh my God, when it was all happening, I was like, what is he going to do? Like, he's retired. He literally goes out every single day. Like, <laughs> damn. And he makes multiple stops. Like, he goes here and then he goes here and then he comes here. And it's just like, <laughs> His life is just ruined. Like, what is he going to do? So this but. one, ever, that, that reminds me of the story. So I can't remember this guy's name. One of the restaurants I worked at, it was in like, I don't know, the whole community itself was a little bit older. I mean, most of the people in that area were like retired people. This dude always showed up like within 10 minutes of opening. Oh, no. I, I always remembered him. I always remembered him because he pulled up as like rascal, right? You see him like coming around the corner, like driving through the parking lot on his rascal, and it's like he's jamming, dude. He's jamming. <laughs> coming in hot, yeah. And he always like came in, he had his drinks. I can't remember for the life of me what he drank. He was an old guy. I mean, you know, he's in a rascal. Probably some wine. coming in hot. He would park his little rascal rock. like out front. He'd pull in, he'd have his drinks, and then like in this parking lot, you know, there was Applebee's that was out back and then there was like this little Italian place over there too and he would just go from like spot to spot and across the street was Chevy's like I think this dude's like just driving around the community just bar hopping at like on 10, 11 o'clock in the morning he stopped That's coming in life. one day like cold turkey we're like oh shit like did, did he fucking die like what the hell happened like he was that old like, that was our first thought I, his, I remember his wife came in and she was just like my husband's got a drinking problem. He can't come home drunk at like noon anymore. Like I just can't handle it anymore. Can you guys please just stop serving him? Oh no. And she was the one that told us like he was going like spot to spot, just getting hammered before noon, like living the <laughs> retirement life. I'm like, damn, dude, like that's kind of reckless driving with that rascal too. Like he could yeah, like good thing you didn't get hit by a car in the intersection. <laughs> That'd be horrible. <laughs> Man. Yeah, that was just, that reminds me, that reminded me of that, so that's funny. Oh funny you brought that up. <laughs> oh, so how do you think, uh, I mean, I like that your, your, your bar regulars, it sounds like they're still getting along and they're coming in to see you. How do you think this is going to affect, like, the long-term outlook? Uh, I don't even mean, none of us know when it's going to open back up or get back to normal. Yeah. Or if there even is a new, a normal or you yeah. know, whatever. Where do you see the industry going after this six months from now, a year from now? I what don't do you know. Look like? Do you right think it'll now, ever go back to where it was before? Mm, I think it's going to take a long time before that happens. Like we're, we're in phase two right now. They've already changed phase three. We can only have five people at a table. <clears throat> from the same family or from the same household um yeah. unless you're you can sit on the patio or outside seating if you're like not from the same household but still five or less people and originally when they were going to go to phase three it was going to be like 10 people and bigger groups <clears throat> no now it's still five and just they keep strict making it more strict and strict and i don't know i don't see it happening until at least next year where it moves on just Do kind of one thing i've kind of no or i don't know one thing i'm seeing a lot of is that like organizations are enforcing these like you have to have a mask you have to keep your distance um and these are more like chain businesses not just restaurants but yeah. you know grocery stores hardware stores you know you have to have a mask to come in here or you have to you have one person per aisle like one direction like one lane aisles you know uh <laughs> one way traffic down aisles or whatever yeah. um six feet like you know at the cash registers but then i look at the people working in these places and they're like masked down by their chin or not wearing mask or like not up in the rules. You're like, yeah. so i'm like i'm wondering how much of this is like you know, they're like PR decisions because like the organization doesn't want to be the one that's like not enforcing the rules versus like, yeah, uh, I guess more of it, it's more of a, how comfortable are people going to be? Even if it were to go back to normal tomorrow, how comfortable would the customers be? How customer comfortable would the workers be going back yeah. to normal? If the organization well, didn't care. I don't know what it is down there, but in Washington, 
you have to wear a mask anywhere you go right now. Every business it's mandated statewide. Do people get like kicked out of stores or anything? Or? Uh, yeah, they can. They'll be refused service. Like really? you can't come in if you don't have a mask. So you have to wear a mask. They just in, started enforcing liquor um, in restaurants and bars. It's six a.m. to ten p.m. Pull your drinks at ten p.m. Um, Pull drinks like at ten p.m. Pull the drinks at 10 p.m. They're really cracking down on. What's the reason I, for that, though? To me, I feel like it's probably more the bars because we had bars that 100 people deep, shoulder to shoulder, not oh, wearing okay. masks. Like we had a couple outbreaks at some bars and stuff, which it's bound to happen. Like you got young kids, especially like hanging out at these places. And of course, no one's wearing a mask. It's at the bar. Like that's just. Yeah. So I think the bars are kind of what made it, they just in, did mandatory shutdown of all restaurants and bars, which it, at a restaurant is different. Like you're not huddled around like 20 people at a table, but I don't know. It's going to be a long time before it's even kind of close to normal, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I, I think that's what I'm most curious about is if, I mean, if all regulations were lifted tomorrow, there's no laws, no active mandates or enforcing of masks or social distancing yeah. like how comfortable would people be going to a concert or going to a bar or but then you know. like you go to the casinos up here you wouldn't even know anything has happened you go across state line into Coeur d'Alene you wouldn't even know anything has happened because Coeur d'Alene is like 20 minutes like east of us and that's in Idaho, in Idaho? and mm-hmm and so all the bars downtown, they're full. Like they don't have the same mandates we do. So it's like all these people are just gonna go over there. They they just added masks in like certain places. I don't know exactly where, but oh, before they did that, like a, maybe a week or two ago, it was like, you could just go over there and it's, you wouldn't even know anything's going on. There's packed beaches, packed everything. Yeah, there seems to be like two different I guess schools of thought when it comes to it. There's like two different cultures, I guess, where there's like people that are like avid mask wearers that want to wear a mask every time they go out. And there's people that wear masks because they have to whenever they go out. Yeah, I'm know? not going to like wear it if I don't have to, but it's like, I'm not going to yeah. be that person walking around the store thinking I'm all cool because I'm not wearing a mask. Put yeah. the goddamn mask on for 20 minutes. So you're fine. Yeah. I put them on when I go in stores now, but I mean, if the regulations were lifted tomorrow, I'd I'd ditch the mask right away and I'd yeah, happily go to sure. absolutely I'd happily go to a concert or a bar or casino oh, or whatever. You know what I mean? Me too. But I still think there's those people that are like, you know, even if it was to open like like normal again tomorrow, I don't think they would be comfortable going out. I think they're gonna be I more than like, if you're habits, not comfortable, but. stay home. Like don't go out. Like am I gonna go see my mom and dad and visit them right now? No. My dad's like in his seventies with breathing issues and heart issues. I'm not gonna I'm around way too many people to go over there right now. Yeah, for sure. It's like yeah, I'm not gonna not fly to California in a couple of days because I'm scared. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, and I guess where I was going with that is what is that I guess what I've been thinking about is how is that gonna impact uh the health of the industry where you know we're not even looking at how soon are they going to lift the restrictions but it's more of a how soon are people going to be comfortable going back out in those kind of environments you know are yeah. we ever going to get past 50 percent capacity again yeah well it's like we've like at buffalo we can seat 300 people like on a normal full capacity right now we're half capacity and we've only been on a wait a handful of times a handful of times in the two months or whatever we have been open so it's not like it's really bringing us down that much like sales are up over last year um Interesting. yeah but it's not like it's not like restaurants are always packed out to the max like all day every day that's not a thing that's true so it's like we've definitely gone down but for me it's I don't have my rail, but I'm still busy because I have 15 table section. Like, so it's, I still am. It's not like I'm, Oh, I'm going to go to work and only make $20 today. That's not a thing. Like I'm, I have to work harder for it, but I'm still going to be busy and make money. 
for sure. Have you guys changed anything like, I mean, I'm sure there's like behind the scenes, like cleaning procedures and stuff getting done. What, what are some of the changes in your cleaning procedures that you guys have done? So Applebee's is very, very diligent about their cleaning. Um, they have a sanitizer specialist that comes in every day. Like a dedicated that, person? A dedicated person that is only, the only person that is supposed to wipe down the tables. They have like a, oh, like a yellow stuff they spray and then some <laughs> water. <laughs> like, oh, a disinfectant and then okay. some water. <laughs> And then like a sanitizer and they have to let it sit for like, I don't know how long, but it's like five minutes before they can turn a table. So with the Applebee's, that was always huge. You turn a table in what, two minutes? Like that was their turn. Yeah, in theory, turn. Like, that was that the was goal. That was their table turn, yeah. But like now it's like, it is going to take at least five minutes. Like if you do the right procedures, for buffalo, sure. just spray it, like wipe it down, like just like you would do before but before it was like a sandy bucket and a wet towel now it's like a dry towel and this sanitizer right on the table so so one thing i thought about and just from like talking to people and you know i'm not i don't work in restaurants anymore but talking to people that are like i guess more like going out and they're more conscious about you know the cleaning behaviors that are in place i see a lot of people asking like well are they like wiping down door handles? Are they wiping down like, wait, what are they doing to clean this stuff? There's a lot of these like inquisitive things going on that, you know, I would have never thought twice about six months ago. Every but, 30 <clears throat> minutes at both places, we're supposed to do high touch points, like wipe it all down, sanitize it all, do all that. Yeah. Yeah, see, and that's where like, I think a lot more... <laughs> I guess like public display of cleaning comes mm -hmm. in and I think that's going to be like a powerful thing, uh, you yeah. know, uh, almost like a culture movement in restaurants where it's like, you know, how much cleaning do you see these guys doing? It's like, oh, these people have like, I can see it turning into like a fun thing too. Like you ever been to like Bubba Gumps or something like that where they do like a whole like song and dance thing where they have like, <laughs> you know what I mean? People walking out their spray bottles and they're doing like a cleaning dance or some Aww. shit, you know what I mean? They <laughs> can get like really creative, like a creative fun it's way good. of like, you know, but it's also like showing off and it's like, look how much I'm spraying shit down, you know? Yeah. Well, it's kind of weird because so at Applebee's when we first opened up here, we had to wear gloves and masks and to me the gloves are a false sense of security like that yeah. my hands i remember like grabbing my water bottle like later in the day without my gloves i was like oh it's all greasy like clearly i was touching and i no joke changed my gloves probably 40 times that day but you just don't realize anything's on your hands so when we opened back up for dining at buffalo we didn't even have to wear a mask and I had multiple people say, I really like that you guys aren't wearing a mask because mm -hmm. they just, and then, then they mandated it statewide, but it was like, they were like, I really like that you guys aren't wearing a mask. Like, I'm just, it's a false sense of security. Like some people yeah. don't want to see somebody come to your table with a mask and gloves on. Like, yeah. like, it's just. No, I I'm, totally agree with that. Yeah, like, I'm more comfortable, like, right now, uh, okay, masks, everyone's wearing masks. I don't want somebody coming to my table with gloves, because you know those are cross-contaminated. You've touched money, you've touched all kinds of shit. <laughs> Anybody that's worked at a restaurant knows that's some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, like, you're, you're gonna slap on some new gloves, like, I am way more conscious of what's on my hands and washing my hands if I don't have gloves on. Like, you can tell, when, like, especially when it like, starts feeling dirty, right? Exactly, like, uh, it's just, to me, those gloves are too much. Mask, okay, I get it, whatever. That's Especially fine, when you but, get like when you really get going and you don't even like think about your gloves anymore, like then it just feels like a second layer of skin and like you just <laughs> now all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, there's a rip in my glove. I've probably wore these uh, too long. Like, dude, like I remember cooking like a lot and I would go, you know, when I'm going going, like I'm going until like the glove is like melted onto my finger and I look <laughs> down and I'm like, I got my like half of my thumb little stuff and then like my pinky left and that's it like there's just 
you know, it's around my wrist, but these three <laughs> fingers are just, <laughs> there's no club there anymore. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I should probably change these, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, oh, that's probably not good. <laughs> those are going to be, I mean, oh, those are going to be some tough, tough habits to break if that's going to be a long-term thing. Yeah. I can't even, I can't even imagine. No, we don't wear gloves at Applebee's anymore. That was like a two-week thing and that. <laughs> so. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Glad that's over with. Oh, man. So before COVID, before quarantine, um and social distancing what are some of the trends that you saw um i guess in the industry like you know we had like the fireball movement a few years ago it seems like seltzers are hot right now oh big seltzers Fucking... especially up here there's so many seltzers yeah seltzers uh what are the big ones what are the big kind of fading out what is... ipas were really hot like last year or the year before yeah they had a nice run actually it's been a good ipas are probably since like 2014 just a strong run so especially up at in least washington, california up in washington we have so many breweries and so that's one cool thing about bellingham that's where i went to school there are so many breweries and like little little places so you'd go and it's just everyone knew you and it was great but it's like now there's still a lot of breweries but now there's a lot of seltzers and like local gins and and then like the canned up here there's a place called dry fly that makes like canned vodka lemonades huckleberry is a oh, huge yeah. thing up here. before i moved here i was like Wait, my mom and dad's house they have some huckleberries they're like little half a pinky nail size little berries i moved here and people are like do you have huckleberry? Do you have huckleberry this? And I was like, what is the deal about huckleberries? Like, it's this huge <laughs> thing up here. Like, people go huckleberry picking. It's like $75 for a gallon bucket of huckleberries. Like, I'm just what? like, they're like a little baby. Have you ever had a huckleberry? It's like a baby it's... blueberry. Like, it's nothing special to me. But up here, it's like, <laughs> what is the fucking obsession? Like delicacy or something? Yeah, like people go like fight off the bears to pick these huckleberries. <laughs> I just don't get it. So huckleberries are big up here. Um, but yeah, seltzers have definitely been big. Uh, the peanut butter whiskey, what is that called? We don't have it at my bar. Um, peanut butter whiskey, huh? Oh, people ask. That's about the only thing right now that people are like, oh, do you have... What is that? Is there a certain seltzer that people like better than the other? I mean, I'm not, I don't, I'm, I think I've had like one, maybe two White Claws. See, I'm, um, I would rather have Truly, but White Claw, we have White Claw, Truly, like, there's so many different types, like, right. I don't know. Is, any, is there a, or any more that popular than the next, or is it just like, give me a fucking seltzer, like, I don't even care, or any flavors? You get the different people, like some people want their Truly, some people want their Mango White Claws, like, <laughs> it just depends how bougie the people are, like, some dude. people are And they're really fucking crazy it. about it, dude, like, I'll like, I'll drink like, them I have to have my, my, I'll drink them while I'm sitting by the pool, because you can put them down, and it's like, you don't sure. feel full, like, it's, I'm not going to drink some dark-ass beer or an IPA while I'm lounging in the 100-degree weather, I'm going to drink right. a White Claw in a in a cup like <laughs> yeah for sure yeah i've seen people that are like hardcore like i have to have my my raspberry white claw then some people are like Get anything but raspberry white claw yeah it's just i guess the, the, I program, can't do are the blackberry or black black cherry trulies are fucking awful yeah, has, has, Huckleberry, has huckleberry found its way into a seltzer yet there is huckleberry ones up here big yeah. sky i think is the brand <laughs> Nice. Is it marked up since it's going 75 bucks a gallon? Thank you. <laughs> you can also get like cucumber <laughs> mint and like melon. <laughs> There's so many different ones. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly they're not made with real huckleberries. <laughs> they're not that expensive. I can huckleberries, dude. Uh, like, I looked like... up here and it is huckleberries. I'm just like, like when I moved back up here, I forgot how big Kokanee is up here. 
You guys, Kokanee is not like a big thing up there, the down fish? there, right? The no. Fish? Kokanee. So it's a Canadian beer and like everyone oh, mom <laughs> loves Kokanee. And I'm like, it tastes like shit. Like, why are you obsessed over Kokanee? Oh, you don't have Kokanee? Like, <laughs> no, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Kokanee and Mac and Jack. That's another one from Seattle that's huge up here. It's Amber. Damn, but it's funny, wild. like, you go different places and different beers. Like, down there, Sierra Nevada's big. Like, we just got a Sierra Nevada on tap. But it's just, it's weird when you go different places. And it's, that was the biggest thing when I moved back up here. I was like, oh, shit, I forgot how big Kokanee and Mac and Jack was. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it seems yeah. like micro micro uh, microbreweries have been... Not completely fading away because there's still some good ones, but it seems like the best ones. Sure, dwindling down for sure, but it seems like the best ones like stuck around. You know, they have oh, their yeah. good, their good breweries with the pub food and everything like that. So, yeah. Sometimes in a mood for a beer, and then sometimes you know, it just sometimes I want to shake it up, and I'm like, give me a beer that I've never had before. You know? Yeah. Like I'm not gonna drink four dark beers before my dinner. Like that's just not what I'm feeling like yeah but now i kind of want to walk into a restaurant and be like give me a seltzer with a fruit that i've never had before <laughs> give me a dragon fruit seltzer. <laughs> i would just i want to see you fight you. the bears for it <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> yeah i would judge the shit out of you if you ordered a dragon fruit seltzer. <laughs> dragon fruit that's like a hot new thing right now and i'm like what the fuck is dragon fruit like dude my my daughter just asked me for one i was like is that like a real fruit like it's like we need to buy I'm, dragon fruit dad i'm like i don't think it's a real fruit like i think it's just like a flavor she's like <laughs> she's looking at me like i'm stupid she's like you've never seen a fucking dragon fruit dish i seen. feel like is that the white or like the yellow ones with like the like claw looking things coming yeah, the claw -looking off things. yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm going to have to pay someone to pick these damn things. I'm not touching that. Then you <laughs> oh, look on the inside. I from or what they are. That's like jackfruit. Wow. I'm like, how? What is this? Like, they use it for fake meat? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. I want no part of a fruit used for fake meat. No thank no. you. <laughs> I'm like, that's disgusting. I can't do all the plant-based shit. Ugh, no. <laughs> Looks gross i can't do it so my daughter made a point to like google up dragon fruit and showed me that it was a real fruit because i wasn't buying it at the time it's the ones with the claws right yeah and i guess you cut it open it's like i don't know it looks like it was white with like black black seeds in it i don't know it's i'm not gonna yeah. buy it for her but she was yeah. persistent about getting me to buy it <laughs> for her look don't tell her about huckleberries okay <laughs> Uh, huckleberries they're like little mini blueberries but apparently mini they're really blueberries. Damn. they're not that great to me i just don't see what it is all about <laughs> they, there is a really good huckleberry vodka up here though i will drink the shit out of I'm you ever see no, have to try it. 44 north huckleberry vodka it's made in idaho so you'll probably never see it but it's fucking <laughs> delicious they only go across one state line huh yeah that's where they pick them, I guess. Well, if you're coming down, you can always deliver. Pack a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I did bring a bottle one time, and me and Mo drank the shit out of it. It's food. It's, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to pack a bottle. <laughs> it's a poolside drink, right? Oh, it's so good with lemonade and club soda. Ugh, yum. You drink the whole bottle and you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Man, you should try chasing it with dragon fruit seltzer. Oh, that'd probably be the shit. <laughs> probably my new jam. <laughs> <laughs> I think Starbucks has a dragon fruit, like, tea thing. That's probably where she got it from. That was where she, yeah, she got the idea from that. She wants to, like, try to make it, she, she tried to recreate the drink at home. She's like... Well, they have it at Starbucks, and if you're not going to buy me Starbucks, then I may as well make it at home, so buy me Dragon Fruit, and I'm playing. Probably way more expensive to make it at home than just buy her one damn Starbucks. Oh, yeah, and, if I got, oh, like, I five like dragons it. for this fruit. And she probably wouldn't like my... it, and it'd be done, and you wouldn't have to deal with it. 
Uh, it sounds like a lot of work trying to track down these dragon fruits to begin with. So yeah, huckleberries. Yeah. I'm intrigued though. <laughs> well, good luck finding them down there. Not the right yeah. climate. <laughs> Damn it! I'll have to bring Fair some enough. huckleberry vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Take this shot. It tastes just like the real thing. Uh, I haven't had a huckleberry in, since I was. Oh, I don't. I feel like my mom and dad's huckleberries are probably not the huckleberries these people are talking about. Cause they're just like, they're like, oh, they're like the size of a thumbnail. I'm like, oh, the huckleberries I know are like half a pinky nail. So. I'll just say that's like a real blueberry, not a. <laughs> yeah, like a thumbnail. Like, no, I don't know. Wild. Well, and there's well, before, purple ones and red. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> well, before we wrap it up today, what's got you excited these days? Sports what's next on the horizon for you? TV. Oh, God. It's like a fucking dream, dude. Yeah. I'm, I was loving watching the 20-year-old games, but I was ready for real shit. Yeah. It gets the fix done, but when you already know what's going to happen, it kind of takes the fun out of things. Luckily, I have a bad memory, so I couldn't remember, oh, who wins this particular game? But usually, <laughs> give it away on the info, so. Oh, shit. Yeah, it'd be nice if they conceal some bad. more stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Baseball being back has been really nice. Really. What, what I really like is, like, there's no days off, so it's been, like, Normally, it's like one to two days off a week for your team, you know, but now yeah. it's like they're just going ham, dude. Yeah, and double headers, I love that shit. Yeah, I don't like double headers. Double headers, but it at ends least so abruptly. Like, I, I have to, I was, when I was watching the Braves and Phillies, was it yesterday, I guess, they were, they were like in the fourth inning, and I'm like, okay, but I got to remember, this is really like the sixth inning, though. So, yeah, we're going to come down. Like, That's like yeah. the, on the, was it the Nats yesterday? Did you see the tarp issue? No. <laughs> oh, no. You got to look it up. It was bad. It was really bad. I, did they play Baltimore yesterday? I'm not sure who they've been I playing. I think so, Baltimore because I want to say Baltimore won, right? I want to say Baltimore I, won. If it, was, if it was the Nats in Baltimore, it got – I think it got canceled, but watching them try to get the tarp on the field, oh, Jesus. It was the oh. biggest shit show I've ever seen. It summed up 2020. Like, <laughs> Perfect. I got something to check out tonight. That's going to be fun. Definitely. Have you started uh, looking into, like, sports cards or anything like that, baseball cards? Uh, I was going through some old ones the other day just for fun. And yeah. just, like, pretending like I'm drafting in my head. And, oh, man. <laughs> All the old school guys like Smoltz and Frank Thomas and Ricky Henderson and all these old so guys. fun to watch. It this set of cards is like ninety three. It's like a five hundred pack box kind of thing. I was just looking through them. I was like, oh, I miss these days. Open up <laughs> cards. I love that shit. I used to collect when I was like growing up and like. Yeah, you always go to the store and maybe buy a pack mm -hmm. of cars or maybe there's like mm -hmm. a certain person you're collecting. And then I think I stopped right – I think it was the year of the strike is when I stopped collecting. Yeah. But I started getting back into it like six well, – six to eight months ago. And just watching like the sports car market right now, dude, it's like taking off. Like some of these cars are ridiculous. The way that the car price is – like there's no Beckett anymore. You know, Beckett, you're like waiting for the newest update of Beckett to see what yeah. your cars are worth. Now it's like everything's in real time. So whatever a player does like tonight, like Fernando Tatis just had a fucking week last week, right? Oh, his yeah. Fucking he car, his fucking card prices went from like, I bought one last week, a Fernando Tatis rookie card. I bought one for like $13 last week. They're already like over 40 bucks now. Damn. Yeah, like they're, they move like a stock market where it's like every Dude, single day. Dude, that me out. I can't do that. Like, it's, it's like insane. gambling in the fucking baseball card world. That's just. Well, and I think that's, I think that's what kind of like, what I guess grabbed me now is like, now I'm looking at a more like fantasy baseball, you know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah. I'm looking for players where like, I see something that no one else does. So I'm like, yeah. oh, this fucking kid, like Carter Keebo. Oh, he's going to light it up next week and it's going to go way up. And I'm like, fuck, I just spent like. 
50 bucks on 30 rookie cards for nothing. You know? <laughs> he has an out fossil arm. He did not kill it. <laughs> yeah, but then you get guys like Acuna where, you know, I bought I bought a handful of his rookie cards like six months ago. It was like February. I bought probably uh, close to 10 of his rookie cards. And I was buying them anywhere from like 15 to 25 bucks each. And they're yeah. like, dude, I mean, they're 50 bucks a piece now. And if you get them graded, like this graded one I got, this thing's going for like 200 bucks now. I don't know if you can Easy. see it. Yeah. Oh. It's insane. Like, um, dude, I love baseball cards. Like, I was always a card too. collector. Like, I remember when I was a kid, it was baseball cards. And then we did some X Men cards. Oh, and dang. We, like, just like, I remember we used to go to this place. It's called the Portage Store, and they, and then the Hardware Store, and you'd go up to the counter, and they would like trade you. It was like an old guy, and he would like give you a really cool, really cool hologram card kind of thing, or yeah. something. And it was just so cool, like. Man, yeah, that was like. God, I miss going to like local card shops growing up. And it seemed like there was one, there was like three or four in like every city, you know? But then it was almost like you had your card shop. Yeah. You can't find those anywhere now. Yeah, no, that's not a thing. <laughs> There's like one in Sacramento that I saw, but they fucking close at like five o'clock. I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to get down there by five o'clock? You know, like wow. who goes card shopping before five on a Tuesday? <laughs> uh... Five o'clock on a Tuesday. Be there by five or we're out. Yeah, we won't be there. place to stay open. It's crazy. Card shops in general. It's like a vacuum shop. Like, you can buy a new <laughs> vacuum for half the price of what they're going to charge you to fix your old shit. Like, yeah. TV, same thing. Like, they, how, no can you, how can you afford it? <laughs> Man, a lot, of, a lot of what car, like, I don't know if all card shops do this, but what a little of, um, I guess, like brands of card, you know, card shops or whatever that are online mostly, they're doing like group breaks now. Or they'll buy like a case of cards. Like you're talking like a case of boxes of cards. So, oh, shit. What happened? You're time. gone. <laughs> you were kind of frozen before. Oh, uh, really? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me right now? I can hear you, yeah. I can't see you, but still here. Yeah, card shops. I just can't imagine how they would stay in business. That's like half the shops at like malls and stuff. It's like, how are they even around anymore? They got to be losing money. Like spots in the case break, so you can claim the rights to like an entire team for a fraction of the cost. So if they're breaking like I don't know 2020 20 tops, they'll buy yeah. a case for you know three or four hundred bucks. They'll break it up into thirty team slots. Yeah. And then people are spending like seventy five bucks on a team slot or something like that. You know? So yeah. I think that's how they're making a lot of money that way. Problem is now you can't fucking buy packs of cards anywhere either. See, I bought some on Amazon like last year, maybe just for fun. I was like, oh, fuck. I just the excitement of opening cards. Remember back in the day when you had a stick of gum in the cards? Yeah. Oh, it was hard as fuck and it was just awesome. And <laughs> I loved it. Like it doesn't bend. You can like snap it. Oh, and, like, no, it just like, snap it in half. <laughs> like, oh, I love that shit. My oh. dad. So my dad always coached me and my sister. So I played softball from the time I was four on my sister's t-ball team up until I was 18. And my dad always coached. And I remember we would stop by like the gas station on the way home or we'd stop by and he would get us like a pack of cards. And it was just like, oh, so fun opening them and like, oh, just hope I know what you're going to get. Yeah. Oh, just the mystery in it. It was so great. I love that shit. Every time I go grocery shopping, I go grocery shopping every week, and every single time, I always try to buy, like, a few packs of cards, yeah. but I swear to God, like, Target gets wiped out. Like, as soon as they hit the shelves, they're wiped out. Yeah. It's sad. Sad days. Oh, I just <sighs> love that. 
All right, before we wrap up for the day, uh, we got some young bartenders coming up behind us. What's some good tidbits and words of advice you'd want to give them? Oh, man. Looking back, I wish I, I wish I would have put away, like, say, $100 a, a night. Like, just stockpile some, like, fucking money because I would be so good right now. <laughs> Damn. Oh, that's smart. Save well, a fraction of your tips or what? Yeah, every night? Even if you save 50 bucks a night. Like, if you're pulling $300, you're not going to miss 50 bucks a night. That and it's 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 not like you're just gonna oh, walk in and just oh all these people are gonna throw money at me. That's not how it works. Like, <laughs> you gotta build it up. Like you gotta feel out your people. I remember like there's two types of people. There's the type that want to talk to you, and there's the type that don't want to talk to you. That that just want to go there to unwind and have a couple beers, and that's it. I remember one of the biggest things like I had this guy and he came in had two beers some wings my rule is I'll try to initiate a conversation twice if they don't want to talk I they're not feeling it I leave them alone I'll try to oh how was your day like if they're not feeling it two initiations I'm done so this guy had two beers had some wings he clearly did not want to talk you could tell he just got off work he was from out of town he saw his keys had his <laughs> tag on him paid his tab I go to grab his tab afterwards and it was like 23 bucks underneath it there was 60 bucks because he, clearly he re was happy that I just did not push him he didn't want to talk yeah I left him alone like there's two types of people they either want to talk or they don't and you just got to feel it out and I don't know like people appreciate when you can feel them out for sure uh, like there's like a few times that stick out in my head on like great great tips and it's like always either they didn't want to talk or I remember a guy in California there's a guy sat on my rail he just got off work you could tell he's covered in paint his steak wasn't well done enough his mojito wasn't sweet enough and I was like oh let me fix it like let's make it right so made his drink a little sweeter oh this is great thank you and like then something else was wrong and we fixed it and it was like he could tell that I wanted to make it right so his tab was like 35 bucks or something and he pulls out a 50 and he pulls out another 50 and he's like thank you for treating me right like and he just appreciated that I took the time like to fix the steak to fix the drink and I wasn't complaining like you can just tell, like, people are just there to just relax, have a good time, like. I think that's a big, them. like, I think that's the big separator from uh, the difference between the good, the, I mean, like, the all-time great bartenders versus, yeah. like, the average ones. The average ones just kind of come in, they go through the motions, treat everyone the same, but the great ones yeah. you know how to read people and can adapt their style of serving them, you know, Absolutely. to the individual. Mm-hmm. Awesome. We'll chat a little bit more offline here, but let's go ahead and say goodbye to everyone. Thanks for joining in for uh, Top Shelf Talk this week. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.